It's the GTN show. Yeah, this week has it all. We've got Fast and Furious racing. We've also got an athlete being sent the wrong way during an event and having an incident with a car. Yep, and we have a triathlon around the world and 60 iron distance triathlons in 60 days. And James completing the Zwift Triathlon Academy. How fit has he got? Starting with some of the stuff we've seen on social media in the last week, starting with this uh, triathlon meme. We love a good meme. Uh, and this one uh, as a picture of the lead race vehicle uh, doing a pretty hairy turn off the highway, uh, going instead of the actual prescribed course to a neighborhood with a silent but deadly Tesla. In case you're wondering what this is all about, <laughs> we had I'm at 70.3 Indian Wells this weekend. And unfortunately, the lead vehicle was sent the wrong way by the traffic control cop, um, which in turn led Vincent Louis off course. Um, and Taylor Spivey's partner was documenting all of this on her Instagram and her stories. And we can see that it says the traffic control cop led the car off course, Vincent um, followed, and then into a neighborhood village, or in a neighborhood, a Tesla car turned into him and hit him. Uh, fortunately, he was okay. We'll get into the results of the race later on. He did continue, finished the race very well, might I add. Um, and yeah, as, as Taylor said, it could have been much worse. Glad he's okay. And she went on a bit of a rampage, giving Iron Man a bit of stick for this. I'm not sure the relevance of the Tesla vehicle. I mean, any car that hits you is going to hurt. It doesn't really matter what brand Qu it is. Quite a quiet vehicle. Oh yeah, maybe it snuck up on him. Yeah, true. Yeah. Mm. Oh, what a chart for those sneaky ones. We also saw this online. Uh, it's the fastest WTCS run times ever. Yeah, now big credit to TriStats. They put out some brilliant stuff on Instagram. If you want to follow anyone and you're a bit of a geek and triathlon like us guys, then they're brilliant. Maybe I'm just talking for myself. Anyway, um, they, yeah, as you say, they've, they've picked out some of the fastest WTCS run times, sprint and Olympic. Uh, it's really interesting. Interesting. Unsurprisingly, Gwen Jorgensen has got a lot of the fastest female yeah, times. Six of the top uh, Olympic distance times, and I think five of the top sprint distance times, maybe six of the top sprint distance times. Pretty impressive uh, total there. The fastest Olympic distance time, 31.41 in Stockholm 2013, and uh, the fastest sprint distance time, 15.31 in Hamburg 2013. Uh, those are some fast times. Yeah, off the bike, wow. Uh, on the men's side, um, we have Alistair Brownlee, top of the table there, over 28.43 in 2009 in London. Um, Mario Mola having an incredible amount of the sprint distance fastest run times with a 13.55 from Hamburg in 2015. Um, yeah, I mean, wow. Interesting thing that I picked up there that uh, there hasn't been a men's top 10 fastest 10K time uh, since 2015. I'm gonna say it, but I think it's maybe just down to slightly more accurate courses. Oh, controversial, Mark. You saying that the, that the course was short in London 2009? <laughs> We're now for the Tri News, and we have two almighty endurance accomplishments to talk about this week. We've got Jonas Dijkman completing his Around the World Triathlon, and Ray Ratasep with his 60 Iron Distance Triathlons in 60 days. Now, we've covered quite a bit about Jonas throughout the past year or so, but he's finally completed this Around the World Triathlon. It took him over 40 months, which involved 456 kilometers of swimming, 21,000 kilometers of cycling and 5,000 kilometers of running, in which time he covered 18 countries and the distance of 120 iron distance triathlons. Yeah, he started his journey by cycling from Munich to Croatia and then swimming for eight hours a day for 54 days straight to cover a distance of 456 kilometers of swimming, uh, getting out of the water. He said, I don't want to do that again. I am and will remain a cyclist. <laughs> <laughs> and he quite quickly jumped on the bike and started the very long bike ride, which unfortunately had some rather big diversions in it due to COVID, the pandemic, uh, borders being closed. He did unfortunately have to wait on the border of Turkey going into Russia for 13 weeks awaiting his visa. That gave him 60 days to get across Russia, but also obviously he was delayed and that meant that he had to embrace the Russian winter. Yeah, so he battled the extreme cold all the way through Russia, averaging 18 kilometers an hour, uh, up to 30 kilometers an hour, but 
the snow was blowing and everything, he basically said at the end of it, cycling across Russia in winter has been an amazing way to have an absolutely miserable time. Apparently he only had three flat tyres. The whole time, yeah. Apparently. Impressive. Wow. What other tyres he was on? And then started the run, 5,000k, whilst pulling a cart with all his gear. Casual. Yeah and went through 11 pairs of running shoes. Um, he then arrived in Cancun, traveled over to Lisbon, and then started his final ride all the way back to Munich, completing and finishing the Around the World Triathlon on November the 29th. Yep, he had to, he had to do his last few uh, days rapidly because the, the days were getting shorter, but he did manage to get, get it in except for a bit of an illness at the end there, uh, and he said after 14 months of pushing himself to the limit, he has uh, some big plans for 2023, but first, he's going to take 14 months off. I reckon that's fair enough. You think he's earned it? Yeah. 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 Well, that was a pretty epic challenge, but if you thought that was epic, Rate Rataset managed 60 iron distance triathlons in 60 days. That's right, the Estonian Rate Rataset has broken the world record for the most iron distance events in 60 days. Uh, he set a new world record doing 60 full distance triathlons in 60 consecutive days in a total time of 657 hours, 40 minutes and 8 seconds, which gives him an average time for each Ironman of 10 hours and 57 minutes and 40 seconds, which is nuts. I mean, most people will be pretty impressed with doing a single Ironman in under 11 hours. And also, average marathon runtime, 3 hours, 14. It's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. Yeah. 60 days consecutive, that kind of run pace. Um, also, he did unfortunately have his own difficulties. Uh, he unfortunately had quite a bad bike crash early on, I think within 20 days of actually starting. He was able to continue, didn't stop things, but he had to do so on a higher bike for a good number of days. Fantastic, allowed him to do it, but it wasn't his usual bike position and doing 180k with the wrong bike position it's going to have its consequences, and it did, because yeah, he really suffered on the run. He suffered a bit for a few days and uh, had a few slower times, but he made those up later on, including on day 41, his fastest marathon time of a 3.05.53. It was like he was getting faster all the way through. He swam in a 50-meter pool, so 3.8 Ks every day in the 50-meter pool, then a loop around Fuerteventura, and then his same run loop he did every day. So, I mean, I mean that's pretty boring in itself, the challenge of running this exact same loop. Yeah, you literally every know day. every corner, yeah, yeah, every bend, every lump. Not to, not to lump. mention the distance that he was covering. Either way, it's a world record, and it is. Pretty impressive. I think that world record might stand for a while. Now then, have you heard about this one, James? This news story. A couple's triathlon. Oh. If only yeah. Jody, your partner, and yourself were still racing. Yeah, if this, this would was, be uh, right up your street. Well, yeah, if it was five years ago before we had kids, maybe. Uh, these days, not so much. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting uh, concept they've, they've come up with here. Uh, $100,000 for the winning couple. Yeah, so it's scheduled for March the 6th, and the title sponsor is the Waterfall Bank based in Clearwater, Florida. And the concept is quite simple. Pro triathletes in a relationship for six months or longer can race together in this kind of enduro race relay format. Um, so first partner will race, second partner, first partner, second partner. It's basically the, the sprint triathlon uh, mixed relay championship from the Olympics format, but with only two people. Yeah. Man and woman. Yeah. Now they've actually got some quite exciting couples taking part already. So Vincent and Taylor Spivey have already put their names down. I think Eric Lagerstrom and Paula Finlay also down there. Yep. I mean, who else? We got. Reese Barkley and Lucy Charles Barkley, yeah, maybe. What about Alistair yeah. and Ruth? Yeah, they, they, um, yeah, that's a strong partner. Emma Pellington and Jared Brown, I believe, are on the list. Are so, they? Yeah, I oh, think nice. they've got the. Uh, I think it's like a golden, golden ticket they get given in the mail. Uh, they they showed theirs the other day on social media. So it's going to be quite an interesting competition. There's been some mixed reaction on social media. Some people are going, oh, hold on, what about uh, same-sex couples? What about, uh, you know, how do you decide who's in a relationship? How do you define a relationship? Do they have to sleep together? Oh, if, I mean... Facebook official? I, oh yeah, is it not official until it's on Facebook? I, I don't know. But uh, their rules, they've said, uh, they have to be in a relationship for six months or more, uh, and I assume it has to be a heterosexual relationship, um, and yeah. It'll be interesting. Still $100,000 at $50,000 each, assuming you split it evenly. And that's the Ironman 70.3 World Championship prize yeah, money. There we exactly. go. Yeah, well, it's definitely worth having a crack if you are. Uh, I'm not sure I can convince Jody though. Speaking of big challenges, uh, someone in our channel is doing a big challenge this coming weekend. This guy. 
He's going to run four miles every four hours for 48 hours. That's pretty epic, Mark. Yeah, it doesn't actually sound that bad when you look at the numbers. Yeah, I mean, a mile an hour, I mean, come on, it's not very fast. Yeah, I mean, and it's 48 miles in total, but the problem is it's extended over 48 hours, and that means you're definitely going to experience some sleep deprivation. Yeah, you have to do it every every four hours, so you're going to be running at midnight and then 4 a.m. and then 8 a.m. and then all the way through to midnight again and 4 a.m. again, and yeah, for two nights in a row. You might get pretty grumpy, this man. Yeah, now it is, Probably a bit familiar to some people out there. It's a David Goggins challenge. Um, he has given us the green light, the thumbs up to go ahead with this one. Um, and I'm, it's all for a good cause. I'm actually going to be doing this in support of the Challenge Athletes Foundation. And I'd love to get your guys' support in doing this. Uh, Challenge Athletes Foundation, or CAF if you're not aware, basically helps physically challenged individuals out there um, in just their general life and sporting activities. A, a fantastic um, charity and organization. Um, so if you'd like to support that and donate money, proceeds will go directly to the charity. You can find the link for that in the description down below. Yeah, and follow along on social media as Mark uh, challenges this. We are all going to be joining them at some point, uh, maybe. I haven't, I haven't. I haven't committed yet, <laughs> definitely not the 4 a.m. one, but uh, some of the boys will be joining Mark, someone will be running along with him at some point, uh, and he might be doing a few just with Reggie at four o'clock. Exactly, morning. I think I will be. Reggie's his dog, by yeah. the way. Just <laughs> I'm gonna be starting <laughs> Thursday evening this week. Uh, if anyone does actually live in the local area, please do ping me a message. I'd love to come and run with you. And But equally, get, get involved remotely and follow me along on social media. However, talking of big challenges, uh, James, you've also been doing the Zwift Triathlon Academy. It's yeah, that's not supposed to be a big challenge, but it turned out it was quite a big challenge for me. Uh, but yeah, wrapping it up this week. So yeah, this is how it went. So six weeks ago, Mark and myself started the Zwift Triathlon Academy with some baseline tests. There was a 10 kilometer run on the treadmill to see how fast we could do it and a 40 kilometer time trial on the bike to see how fast we could do that. Since then, it's been five bike sessions and five run sessions specifically set up as part of the Zwift Triathlon Academy. And now it's time for the finish line tests, which is again, a 10 kilometer time trial on the treadmill and a 40 kilometer time trial on the bike. Uh, see if we've improved at all. So let's do this. I'm definitely going backwards from my baseline, I think. I'm already hurting and I'm 90 seconds in. Two hundred minutes ago, and there goes my time for the baseline. Didn't quite get it. Almost there. And we're done. Well, that was pretty painful. But I actually did improve a little bit. If you want to see how much I improved, there's a video coming out this week. So tune in for that and you can get the full roundup of the whole Zwift Triathlon Academy. Now for what the tech, and this is one that actually slipped through the net a little bit back in October. Ford Motor Group, yes, Fords who make cars, have filed for a patent in the cycling world, and specifically talking about the front derailleur. Yeah, so they've got this new fancy technology, apparently, uh, we haven't actually seen it, like we say, they've just filed a patent, but it's called nitinol, and or ni nitinol, nitinol? Nitinol, nitinol. I don't know. Uh, it's a nickel titanium alloy, and basically it's a memory alloy, when you heat it up, it goes back to its original shape. So they are replacing the front derailleur with two little wires, one will get longer as it gets heated up, one will get shorter as it gets heated up, and it'll be able to change your derailleur with just two little wires as opposed to a whole motor or a whole mechanical front derailleur, which sounds very futuristic. Uh, obviously, they filed a patent, so they obviously believe it's technology that exists and can work. I really struggle with this because it does make me want to say, what the tech? Surely they are going to 
want to use this on the Mars rover or maybe in a hospital operating theatres more urgently than the but front. But no, there are indeed departments. The I know exactly where this of a go. cyclist's bike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, for us um, guys, I mean, yeah. I, I like, uh, I'd like a, a more streamlined and exactly. aerodynamic front derailleur. So thanks yeah. very much. So look out for the trickle down technology to a bike shop near you soon. Uh, now moving on to our giveaway. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we announced the Met giveaway, which was for some Met Manta helmets, um, which we wear here on the channel. Um, and we have the winners. So first up, we've got Alex Lewin. Uh, second, we have Stephen Rollins. Hugo Carlos and Oliver Lockyer. Yeah, congratulations to all of you. We'll be in touch and sending out the helmets to you very soon. Now on to your race news. And we're pleased to say we have a bunch of race news this week. Uh, starting with this one, which we completely forgot to preview last week, even though we're both pretty excited about it. The Xterra World Champs. So Flora Duffy actually led from start to end, but it wasn't actually a triathlon. They cancelled the swim because a storm was rolling in and the sea conditions were pretty gnarly. Uh, a few people were a little bit grumpy about this because it's Xterra. Mm. It's supposed to be gnarly. That's literally like what it's supposed to be. But I did see some videos on social media of that those waves and uh, gnarly and then there's gnarly. I, I like a choppy <laughs> swim, but I would have been yeah. slightly nervous about going in there and also very nervous about some other less and able swimmers. Exactly, maybe. and they'll swim exit. Uh, there might have been a few broken arms and shoulder dislocated yeah. shoulders in, in those that's well. So probably a good call. What they did was a 3.3K run and then the bike and then the normal run at the end. So duathlon format. Uh, Flora Duffy <laughs> led uh, with 18 seconds after the first run. She then extended that lead by four minutes on the bike which is pretty impressive, and then extended lead again on the final run to win her sixth Xterra World Championships title by seven minutes. Over on the men's side, it was Hayden Wilds that unsurprisingly took off on that first run, posting a 10.34 for that 3.3, 3.4 kilometer run off-road. Um, he did obviously lead onto the bike. He was chased down by a few guys behind, including Arthur Serreras and Ruben Rizafa. They did catch him, around about halfway into the bike. He stuck with them for quite a period of time, but the storm did come in towards the end of the bike for the final 10 minutes or so. Yeah, and apparently it turned into a proper slip and slide muddy. And uh, Hayden Wilde actually said afterwards that he had too much pressure in his tires and he really struggled to stay with him. Ruben Rizafa actually showed his class, uh, I think his eighth time on this course, and he uh, rode away from them, had a bit of a gap going into T2, uh, but Hayden Wilde showed his run class and ran them down. The top three men there finishing within 60 seconds of each other. Hayden Wilde in first, uh, Olympic bronze medalist getting the Xterra World Championship title. Arthur Serias from France in second and Ruben Rizofa running out the podium. I mean, to be honest, this just shows actually the class of the Xterra athletes as well. Some of these names you may not know outside the Xterra world, but their running ability is incredible. Really Hayden impressive. Wilder, it's his first uh, elite Xterra world, world Championship, but he did actually win the under 19 age group in 2015 and 2016 in Xterra. So it's not his first time doing the uh, thick tired uh, racing. Uh, on the women's side, as we said, Flora Duffy won. Uh, Luan Duvieson from Switzerland was in second and Michelle Flippo from Mexico rounding out the podium on the women's side. That's right. On the same weekend, we also had the Xterra Trail World Championships, which have been running for a number of years, but it's the first time they actually hosted it on the same weekend in the same location. Um, so taking the wins there was uh, Joseph Gray and Grayson Murphy, um, and in a time of one hour 22 and one hour 31 respectively. Other racing this weekend, we had the Clash in Daytona. Last year, that was the big PTO race. This year, it's still a pretty big race. Uh, as you know, that's in the Daytona Speedway. They swim inside the lake, inside the Speedway, then bike 20 laps around the Speedway, and then they run four laps around the Speedway. So it's all in one stadium. Pretty uh, good for spectators, uh, pretty boring for the athletes, but uh, fast racing nonetheless. We had a bit of drama on the women's side. Um, Lucy Hall, First out the water, as you would expect. Jody Stimson not far behind her and then a whole bunch of chasers. Uh, Lucy Hall extended her lead even more on the on the bike uh, and then they all got off to chase her down. Uh, Jody Stimson then, the drama happened, her race number flew off 
and went fluttering down onto the, onto the floor. The camera zoomed in on it, and everyone was like, oh dear, she lost the race number. And then they said, she's going to get a penalty. That's unintentional littering. It's going to be a 30-second penalty. And everyone spoke about that for a whole lap. And then they said, well, if she picks it up when she runs back past it, will her penalty go away? And the con consensus was, yes, it will. And then just before she got there to pick it up, a referee saw it and picked it up. Woo! Yeah, and then it was drama, and they're like, wait, no, put it back, put it back. Uh, uh, apparently someone got on the radio and told him to put it back. He laid it down on the floor, and then as she ran past, he pointed it to her. She stopped, picked it up, and carried on with her race. She didn't get a 30-second penalty, but I'm not sure we need any of that hoo-ha in a professional race, do we? No offense, I, I think it says a lot about racing around a speedway that that is what we're talking about, getting excited about. <laughs> on the men's side, however, we also um, had Magnus Ditlev throwing down the power on the bike, extending his lead to two minutes over the rest of the field, the likes of Blumenfeld, Rudy von Berg, and Ben Knut. Um, again, unsurprisingly, Christian Blumenfeld set off on that run at a blistering pace and chased him down, and another title to his name this year. Yep, amazing. Christian Blumenfeld wins again. Uh, that's going to do some, some damage to his points on their PTO ranking. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Magnus Zitlev was in second, Rudy von Berg getting third after he had to pull out of the Collins Cup with illness, so he's back to racing, which is good to see. On the women's side, uh, after that drama with Jody Stimson, Jackie Herring actually reeled in Lucy Hall in the last mile. So she ran past her with just a mile to go. Very frustrating for Lucy Hall after leading the whole day. But Jackie Herring taking a well-deserved win. Lucy Hall in second. And then with 200 meters to go, Marjolaine Pierre outsprinted Jody Stimson for, for third place. Uh, literally a few seconds in it there for third and fourth. Jody Stimson getting fourth and Laura Siddle in fifth. Uh, we also had Ironman 70.3 Indian Wells this weekend. If you remember back to the start of the show, we had a bit of drama there too. Uh, yes, Vincent Louis was hit by a car as he was leading the race and sent off course and hit by a very quiet Tesla. Um, <laughs> he did actually post the fastest swim of the day, a whopping one minute ahead of Andy Potts, the uber swimmer, so that's very impressive. And he was also joined by Heli Geens, and then they had a three minute advantage on Lionel Sanders. Um, as I said, Vincent was unfortunately sent the wrong way. He, also, he still managed to come off the bike with or very close to Lionel Sanders. But he was only sent the wrong way with 10 kilometers to go, and he still had a two minute lead on Sanders at that point. So it was very pretty impressive. much his race to lose. He ended up getting off the bike only nine seconds behind Sanders, despite going off course, having a crash, getting back on his bike and catching up again. So very impressive. Uh, definitely the HTFU award for him. <laughs> yeah. um, Heli Geens also had his own drama, having rode very well with just 5K to go, he was handed a drafting penalty. I mean, he did even post himself, but tongue in cheek saying, you know, look, I thought I was 12 meters, but I think everyone says that, don't they? Um, so yeah, unfortunately he had to serve a penalty, which uh, yeah. which was a bit of a, dis uh, a disappointment for him, but still managed to ha hang on to the podium spot. So it's Lionel Sanders that still took the win there, posting a 109 half marathon. Vincent Louis coming in second, posting a 112, probably not his normal running performance, but well, I think we'll let him off giving he had a crash, and Heli Geens in third. On the women's side, Daniela Lewis. Danielle Lewis uh, took the win. Tamara Jewett in second, and Ali Brower in third. Cool. We also had Ironman Western Australia, um, and it was Matt Burton that took the win there. And probably more impressively, the fact that it was the same week of his wife giving birth. Yeah, she gave birth to his first son on the Monday before the race, uh, and then he went off and won the race, which is, yeah, I mean, way to focus. He, yeah. said, he said he was channeling his son, he had actually written his name on his water bottle uh, on race day. Uh, so yeah, he took the win ahead of Stephen McKenna and Fraser Walsh in third. On the women's side, Kylie Simpson won by a massive 48 minutes over Sarah Thomas with Kate Bivilacqua in third. And we also had the Challenge Family World Bonus Rankings, uh, which probably doesn't get enough press these days because it is still quite a good pot of money, but with the whole PTO World Rankings and everything else going on, uh, which we are going to announce very soon, um, yeah, it's still quite an achievement and quite a result again. Yeah, so Magnus Ditlev jumping right up those rankings at the last minute with his second place at the Clash Daytona. Uh, Patrick Langer taking the win, though, in the World Bonus for Challenge and the 30K uh, prize purse for that. Magnus Ditlev getting $20,000 for his points in second, Frederick Funk in third, Pablo Depena in fourth, and Thomas Steger in fifth in those world rankings for challenge. 
Over on the women's side, it was Annie Haug that took the win there, taking that 30k. Sarissa Davies in second. Lucy Hall also doing very well here this year, taking the third spot. Nicholas Berrigan in fourth, and Laura Sedow in fifth. On the other ranking uh, table that we are, everyone is talking about, uh, we'll have more updates for you next week, but we can be pretty sure that Christian Blumfeld, who has just added his third point scoring race, he only had two point scoring races up until this point, and they were both pretty big scorers, uh, has jumped up the rankings. Yeah. So it remains to be seen where exactly he's going to jump up to in those rankings, but you can bet it's going to be pretty high. In addition to that, we also have some exciting news from the PTO, the Professional Triathletes Organization, regarding events for next year. So stay tuned for that. But from here on until, well, around February time, we've got very little racing. Yeah, there's actually no professional racing. There's one 70.3 in Chile in Pucon uh, in the beginning of January, I think, and then nothing until the 19th, 20th of February at all. I don't know what we can talk about next week, Mark. The weather? About, yeah. Um, Potholes? Christmas decorations? Now for the caption competition. Last week's photo was of Alex Yee with the bottle cap in his mouth, um, standing next to Martin Van Riel at the Super League Triathlon. Um, and we got some great captions coming in from you guys. First one from Just John P said, putting the bottle on the seat was funnier in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Fergal Akala says, Yee's approach to winning triathlons, chew up, then spit out the competition. Nice. Uh, XBV93 said, chill out, Alex, don't blow your lid. And then Artis Del Rio said, oh, I'm going to leave this to Mark because he does it much better than me. Do I really though? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm strong to the finish because I eat me spinach. I'm Alex Yee, the triathlon man. Brilliant. Oh, thanks. Okay. Yeah, very good. Well, Artis, uh, thanks for not doing the, uh, the impression ourselves and thanks for making Mark <laughs> do it. That's brilliant. <sighs> yeah. I always so get stitched up. Send us your details and we'll, uh, we'll send a cap out to you. Not a bottle cap, a swim cap. Hey. Uh, now for this week's caption comp photo, or photos, it's uh, Vasco Velasha having a little trouble ahead of one of the Super League triathlons. Firstly, getting directions from Georgia Taylor-Brown, and then Sophie Coldwell. I hope you found his way in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, do your best. Leave your captions in the comment section below this video. But that's it for the show this week. We do have loads coming up on the channel, including James's final Zwift Triathlon Academy video Bringing it all together, let's see how he gets on and see how fit he's got. Mm, or not. Uh, we also have Heather attempting a world record. That's the indoor cycling class world record. It is a long time you have to do an indoor cycling class to break that world record. Yeah, very long time. And also throwing out a request to you guys, please do send in all your photos and videos of you doing triathlon related things, your pain cave, races, training, whatever you like, send in your photos using the photo uploader link that's on screen right now, or you can find also down in the description below. Yep, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos from us. If you're looking for something to watch right now, Mark and I did a runner versus cyclist competition in Girona where we went to the top of a mountain, to the top of a castle. It's Woo! a pretty good video. Yeah, and Heather did a park run and tells you how you can do your park run. Yeah, also don't forget to head on over to the GTN shop. We've got some fantastic stuff there that you might be able to get hands on ahead of Christmas, maybe get something for your loved one or for yourself. Treat yourself. Hey, why not? It's Christmas. Yeah. <laughs>